guys, happy Phaser Friday. Uh, measure for me has been one of those elusive topics where I know how to program it, but I have had zero clue how to explain it. So over the last couple weeks, I've talked to some friends who are some amazing MA trainers here and across the pond, and they have helped me articulate how to talk about measure. And so this is kind of my first, hey guys, I'm gonna try it. So let's see if I can talk about measure in a way that helps us all understand what it's doing and maybe use it better than before. Okay, measure. Okay, so what is measure? If you take a look at the phaser editor here, I can see that I have a phaser running and a phaser is just a loop, right? It's looping and it starts over and over and over and I've defined a phaser in the most repetitive way possible. Now, this loop is defined either by one of two things, the width of the individual steps or a feature called measure. Measure determines how many beats this loop is gonna have. When we create a phaser, by default, there is no measure activated. Therefore, my loop is being determined by the width of the individual steps. And I know that step one, by default, has a width of 100. So I'm just gonna activate it just to show nothing changed here. So in step one, and step two, I see that they both are set to 100. Nothing changed, it looks exactly the same. I can take a look at my sheet view here so we can kind of see them back to back. There, we're gonna look at the sheet view so I can edit them and we can see the graphical interface below it. A phaser by default has a speed of 60 BPM. I'm gonna enter this in here in my sheet view just so I can see nothing is changing in the 3D as I kind of put these default values in so we see what's happening as we change them. And each step by default has a width of 100. Therefore, with a phaser that's newly created, nothing is activated, measure is turned off, and our phaser loop is now being defined by the width of our individual steps. So if I go in here and I change my width to step one to 20, and maybe my width of step two to 20, you can see my phaser is running faster. Now, I didn't change the speed, I just changed that loop. So instead of it being 200% wide, it's now 40% wide, which means I get through that loop a lot, quote unquote, faster. If we set this back to its default here, I can see everything goes back to exactly how I had it before, where it feels like it's running the same speed, which is a lot slower, but my loop just got longer. So now it's gonna take longer to go through that loop. Measure is how we lock in that loop. So let's say I have step one right here and I want it to be at 10%. I want just the lights to go on and off. We're making a chase. This is a very common issue. I feel like people run in with chases. So I'm gonna set transition to zero so we can just kind of see it snapping on. So now I'm creating this chase, but it's going faster and I wanted the speed to stay the same right? But I didn't change the speed. This is where measure is going to come into play. It's going to allow that loop, instead of it being defined by the width of the individual steps, it's going to be defined by how many beats we've set it to. If I want this phaser to go back to looking exactly how it was before without me having to activate measure, I would actually have to go into step two and change this to 190%. Now my first step is 10%, my second step is 190%, which adds up to 200%. Now, I feel like we're doing enough when we're programming, I don't need to do any extra math when making phasers, which is why measure is your friend. Let's set this back to 100, and now it's running too fast again, but I'm gonna set measure in here to two beats. I like to think of a beat as that 100% width. So when we've created this phaser, brand new, haven't activated anything, my width of the first step was 100 and my width of the second step was 100, making it 200, making it 200%, making it two beats because each beat accounts for 100%. However, when I've turned on measure, I don't have to think about these percentages anymore. I could simply say, hey, I want you to be 5%. So less lights turn on at once, but this doesn't affect the speed at all. I could even set this up to 200%. and now the lights are on longer and off shorter, but my speed remains intact. So what measure is doing is defining how many beats. Maybe I only want it to be one beat that it runs through. If I change measure to one, you'll notice that everything doubled, right? Because now my phaser is 100% wide instead of that 200% wide. Or I have the option to set this to four, 
or really anything in between. I just find myself using one, two, and four the most. But if you're using others, let me know. I'm always curious to hear what everybody else is doing. And now this is set to four beats and my beats can individually be seen here. So I can see kind of where I am in the loop when I'm messing with my whip. So if I go in here to step one, phaser steps, whip, and maybe I only want them to be on for a beat and off for three, then I could have this on be one beat wide and then the off be three beats wide. I was talking to one programmer and he was telling me how he really likes to work within this four beat method. And so he can easily see like my lights are on for this beat and off for this four. And then he actually uses learn speed a lot when he's busking. Uh, but this is just one workflow. There are so many. And the important thing to keep in mind as you're making your phasers is how am I determining my loop? Is my loop determined by the width of the individual steps or is my loop determined by how many beats I've set measure to? Either or is fine. Just find what works best for you. See you next week.